Pagans couldn't wall in, so I was always playing Pagotos, I was always going double gateway and I was always winning. So that was my strategy for Luna, for PvT. I was so happy about my big brain and I was like, oh, let's abuse this map. Let's play some Protoss shenanigans, but let's see if this is the case. Uh, anyway, it's I think nowadays the, 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 the Terrans figured out how to defend double gateway even without worrying. Um, but as you can see, it's this, this expansion is fixed. You can wall in here and have expansion. So it's normalized, it's, it's adjusted to the current meta, to the play style of the, uh, of the players nowadays. Do we know, do we know Sugo from Hasso Chobolik? He was playing in, in Gosulik, I believe, and he was also playing in Pro League at some point, so Suko is a really good Protoss, guys, like, he, I think he is definitely on the level uh, where he can fight against October Zerg in a normal game, so um, I don't think there is a too big of advantage uh, for October Zerg, because October Zerg is qualifying to the, mo most, to the most of the mm, Pro Leagues, so that's why I said I'm, I would probably bet on him, but Suga is also really, really good. So the fact that he's not playing BSL um, doesn't mean that he's not on the level where um, where he can face BSL Pro League players. And as you can see, this 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 was mineral only, and this also was mineral only. Now it has gas. Is like realizing that this is uh, like he, he didn't realize what it is, but uh, maybe after scouting the timing of the probe scout, he was able to see that this is gateway first. So he built four links, which is, is I think, perfect. That is very, very good for him that he is building more drones now because he should be able to stop Protoss. Oh, that's nice. Nice block from Sugo, and only one link will get in. So now October is like we'll have to A, think about building more links because the more Zillots will come along him, and he only has one hatchery right now. Uh, and B, he will also have to expand at the same time. But we can see that he's going for two base play, two base layer, and we are seeing more links coming. There will be more Zillons, so as, Zillons. so as you can see, Sugo is able to apply a lot of pressure. Uh, and this drone might even die soon with the second Zillot Zillot arriving. There will be more links arriving as well. So Sugo, what works for October Zerg is that he didn't scout, like he didn't allow Sugo to scout the main base, but I don't think that's the case. And very nice micro from Sugo. He should be able to trade well against those things. It will be close though. Very nice micro from the Protoss. And as you can see the scout is already in the main base. So Sugo. And Sugo is playing with the gas into Cybernetic Core and Nexus without a forge. So this is how risky he is playing. This is a greed mode but that's what he should play I think. However, I think he might be in a small trouble right now after if he will lose those two links for free ish. He doesn't have a forge yet even, he just started the forge, so the mass link flood might be dangerous to him. But he was able to apply a lot of pressure on October Zerg. The Stargate timing is I think even good enough. Uh, that he will be able to defend against those mutas with the cannons. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is a kind of cannon position. Maybe like trying to put it maybe here to, to try to protect the uh, mineral line would be smart. As, as you can see, October Zek is aware that 
Okay, man, so you was greedy, so I will try to abuse this fact. I need to kill like five probes minimum in order to get this back, get, get this game back. He killed two already, pulled some from mining, so that's, that's I think, good. Nice micro from Sugo, but also nice micro from October Zerg. The mutas are in production, but... Hmm. Somehow the supplies are so close. Another run by, but there will be a cannon in the main base, so I don't think it's that good of, a, good of an idea. Maybe. Maybe with the mutas he will be able to to target fire this um, this gate this target I'm not a huge fan of, of this double double hatch play if you don't have that big of a tech advantage because the protoses nowadays are so smart that they know how to defend the the high aggression from the from the Zeg so usually as a Zeg you want to have this option to to switch into the macro style uh, relatively well. So as you can see, October Zerg is taking the third base. I like it a lot. Uh, I would like to see him being a little bit more active with those mutas. Um, he is probably researching the, the... No, probably not, because he has still 200 gas left and already he built scourges and mutas, so I don't think he would have enough gas to also research the third base. But he will be able to eliminate a couple of probes, so that's nicely done. He started firing the probes. I like this choice from October Zerg. Although he is taking a lot of damage on those mutas. <laughs> and this is a beautiful dance, we all know it. This is a dance of Starcraft players. We don't dance tango, we dance Corsairs and mutas. Okay, so forward hatch. October Zek is trying to play it a macro game. That's why he was target firing the probes. He don't want to allow Sugo to explode on two bases. Um, because usually the pro Protoss and Terrans, Protosses and Terrans have this um, advantage on two bases because they have much more workers. They can build workers without being afraid that it will disrupt uh, their like production time in the buildings where, where they, they are producing units. So I think that's uh, that's smart from uh, from from October Zerg to kill those probes because now he will slow down Sugo in tech. A little bit he's also forcing more Corsairs. Um, so the biggest threat for October Zerg I would say right now is is that he will lose overlords to those uh, to those Corsairs because there will be like six or seven of them. There will be seven at least with plus one weapon upgrade. It will be incredible force power, and I don't see Hydra then. We can see that uh, October Zerg is having 500 gas, but once those Corsairs will go out, and he will have no Hydras, he will have a lot of. He will have to have a lot of a lot of uh, scourges. And it's impressive how much this link from October Zerg was able to scout and achieve. I really like it. And I would like to see him maybe sending those drones to the third base uh, because this natural seems very oversaturated and this third base seems definitely undersaturated. Uh, but we can see that there is a timing from Sugo. The number of scourges is definitely not enough. There is not enough units to defend those overlords and this is what I was talking about. He needs to be careful, Sugo is flying and fighting against those mutas and scourges, but there is still five mutas left. This is pretty tight defense from from October. It's very impressive that he is able to defend this push with so little. And six hatch is coming soon. He needs to be careful though. Uh, 
Let's wait for Sugo to yeah add more gateways, go for the where is the sit yo there is a citadel of Anul and Templar I have already. Plus one weapon is not done, so that's maybe not the best. But the more mutas are coming. Suko very smartly keeping the production of the Corsairs. He's aware that the um, more mutas is an option. As you can see, you can place Sunkens here, place Sunkens here, and you have three bases well sunk up. Those Zealots, yeah, they will not achieve too much, they might even die to those Mutas. So Sugo has to escape, and October Zerg, it looks like he turned this game back on his favor. He's fighting against plus one Corsairs, it will be close. Now, it, it costed so much gas uh, for Sugo to build those all those Corsairs, and he didn't achieve that much with it. This Sanker was blocking the. This was a tight wall. And more mutas coming from October Zerg, so I'm pretty shocked that he didn't go for the Carpes. The Archon is coming, but there is also a Sanker, and I think October Zerg can simply jump on top of those, this Archon with, with the amount of mutas he has. Uh, three Sankens are here even, so there is no chance to attack over here, and... <laughs> this base location is so... you need to have cojones like a bull to take this expansion, but on the other hand, if you will place like couple cannons here and the High Templar, how the Zerg will pass with this, with this entrance? It will be so hard, so that's actually a smart idea to try to take this expansion, but only if you will take it. Until you you are trying to take it, it's hard. It's hard, guys. Because as you can see, it was relatively easy to deny by October Zerg. By our Boyan. And if you didn't know, October Zerg is a professional bowling player. Uh, he is playing, I think, for the team from Austria. So I'm following him on on the social medias and he's having good results so cool cool thing to do I would say and Sugo is not giving up but one one Hydras are coming nice storms from Sugo However, October Zerg is not giving up, but there are no more storm available. However, there is a lot of Zealots, but those Zealots have only plus one weapon and the Hydras has plus one one. So I think Hydras should be able to take it and October Zerg will deny the third base of Sugo. And also more, couple of lurkers, GG from Sugo, GG from October Zerg and we are having one zero lead for Mr. Boyan the bowling champion. Ooh. Mr. Wilhelm the first. Happy 25th anniversary. Here's to another 25. Here is to another 25. Yes, guys, I'm 32 right now. So StarCraft was released when I had seven years old. So I will be 57 and I'm praying to the God that let's hope that for like 25 years from now, when like PVT meta will be first first scout <laughs> or something like that, I will be still around and I will be still um, still uh, hyped about about Starcraft. We have Polypoid. Oh, we have Devil versus Squall. That's interesting. Ah, oh, and this boring map now, guys, but 
In order to have fun, you also need to work. And let's call watching the game on Polypoid <laughs> working because it's definitely not as hyped as Sandstorm or like Longinus, new Longinus. Uh, but we will still gonna see um, uh, cool games over here. During this tournament, there will be plenty more games as you can see to come. So let's go to the game. Cross position polypoid. Yeah, guys, let me know how old are you. Like, type your age in the chat. I'm like, my age is 32, but I'm going to finish 33. I'm going to be 33 in like one month. But I need to say to you guys that when I was starting playing, I was one of the youngest players in the in the Polish community. Like in some year, I was even like the like discovery of the year or something like that because I was like 15 or 14, and the other players were like 18 or 20. So uh, I consider myself as a, one of the youngest, and yeah, we have all of you guys. Very mature people, very responsible. And that's why I love the community of Brood War. Mr. Mars being the younger one. Mr. Mars is the youngest guy in the chat with 31 years old. Maybe in 25 years old. Our audience will be so old that we're gonna be able to approach the company which is selling the diapers for old people. <laughs> that would be great. That would be great target, right? <laughs> Ooh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Kid is 27. Nice. I think Mr. JD Cronan uh, is from 2000 years, so he's or maybe like 1908, so he's he's also very very old, very very young. Uh, I think Mr. Oyaji is like 97 or maybe 90, like he's also very young. So there are a couple of young players. There was Mr. Tai Tu, who was also pretty young. I think he was like around 25. He he's around 25 right now. Okay, oh yeah, it's 96, yeah. So there is also a Z player from China, Kid. No, no, it's, it's not Kid, it's Dugu. Dugu is also, I think, from 2000. So we have huge variety, variety of, uh, of age, from 20 to 55, probably. Nice scouting from Sugo. And as you can see, October is like again is going for this double uh, hatchery pressure, but this time it's against Forge first. So let's see what will be the difference maker for this. I mean, difference maker. What's how? What will be the difference? Oh, don't tell me that you are going to take this mineral only. Yeah, yeah, because the, the more obvious expansion would be this one. But yeah, okay, taking this one, I don't understand totally, but I think it's definitely much better option than going for Mineral only. If, like, considering that he's going for this very hard, very fast Mutas, but Sugo is also going for relatively fast Cybernetic Color. And as you can see, he transferred the right amount of, ground, right amount of probes. Maybe one more would be better, but still it's... It's 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 good split. He understands this. Oh, this is very fast gas, I think. And the probe is still alive. This is very important. He wants to keep it alive until fifth minute mark because around fifth minute mark there will be a link speed for the Zerg and this probe will die anyway. But if you see leading speed around 5 minutes, that means that this is not a Hydra bus because they expand gas for the speed and not for the 
can do that then. Um, so going back with this blow home would be probably not bad even right at, at this moment. Especially that this zealot, but this probe is also like keeping those uh, links occupied, and as you can see, those this zealot will be able to apply pressure and speed. Link speed is around five fifth minutes done. Um, October Zek should see that there is a zealot in his main base, and as you can see, one zealot and eleven drones are not mining for a lot of time. So Sugo is doing good job applying pressure. The Stargate is blinking, the probe survived, the second Zealot will apply pressure, so nicely done by, by Sugo sending this Zealot. And this, as you can see, the supplies in this game is completely different compared to the Luna game, so maybe the standard opening is beneficial for Sugo. Yeah, you want to hide your, your Zealot so it will have uh, maximum amount of value but this is a spot where it's being hit by but still it's it trades well for four links it's i think a five links even cool value but another zero is applying more pressure to the main base of october Zerg. so that's a beautiful play from sugo and as you can see one more zero is already waiting to do the same thing Go to 12 o'clock, but he's waiting for the right moment. I think October is like needs to add two more hatcheries right now. He has not bad amount of pro drones. He's he's doing good job droning up, but seeing the second extractor indicates that he wants to go for the more muta oriented build over there. Um, I don't know whether he went for the carpets or not. So nowadays Zex are playing the mutas uh, with the destination of denying the damage, not with the destinations to apply pressure on, on Protoss. So obviously they are applying pressure just by making the mutas because Protoss has to build like at least at least one one cannon and keep building corsairs. Um, maybe even go for an archon if there will be more mutas. But having those five mutas is. Is I think pretty cool. Yeah, I don't know what's the best position for like maybe a here and here to Sankens and it's it's very good against Zilots. But it will be pretty powerful timing from Sugo. Will be seven coasters and probably seven zealots. Uh, oh no, there will be an archon. Okay, so it will be archon timing. Okay, but October is like already has two sankens in each place, even three over here. So I think he should be good against if there will be not too many zealots. It all depends on the amount of amount of zealots incoming with this push. There will be six gateways. So. Maybe one more round, like 10 zealots, 1 Archon and 7 Corsairs, he not necessarily have to kill the Sankens, but the Overlords might have a hard time surviving under this pressure. Oh, and Tobias like, wants to go for the 6 hatch. He's going for it, but I'm not sure. I mean, he has a Hydras, okay, so he should be fine. But those courses definitely has potential. He doesn't even need to bring the zeros, I think. Yeah, those mirrors have no chances. Oh, 
and look at the supplies of October Z. It's going to be 53 in a second. At least he's no longer super blocked. <laughs> he's, he should be like, thank you Mr. Sugo and morph like five lurkers immediately. Two overlords. Two dead overlords. Nicely done by Sugo. This game works much better for him compared to the previous one. He's doing so much damage with those Corsairs. However, there will be a lot of Hydras from October Zerg. His economy is not perfect, but it's a relatively good amount of drones. I think the main base and natural are well saturated. He could use maybe three more drones for this gas, but he can definitely produce Hydras from six hatcheries with this saturation. Yeah, but the big problem is that he constantly has to rebuild those overlords. So it's hard to focus on building Hydras. Plus one weapon is already done, but there are so many Zillos and High Templars from Sugo. So definitely having the, the Lurkers will be needed for October Zerg to survive this aggression, because this is a little bit risky for, for Sugo, because they, yeah, if somehow he would lose the air superiority, he will have a problem. Nice sniping the High Templars from October Zerg, abusing the fact that there are no goons with it. And sniping majority of them. Yeah, this is how you abuse, abuse the Protoss, guys. This is how you abuse the Protoss. But look at the supplies, guys. It's 160, 140 against 80, so huge advantage for Sugo. The amount of Zealots is insane, but he has plus two weapon already, uh, so it will be very hard to fight against it without Lurkers. Maybe not very hard, because it all depends on the numbers, but I think it would be definitely much efficient, much more efficient to have Lurkers in his army composition. Sugo already taking the third base. So many Zillots. I don't see October Zerg winning this engagement. Look at the amount of Zillots from Sugo. He is a Zillot man. Truly Zillot man. Do, 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 do. And more Overlords are falling. 154 supply. He is doubling the supplies of October Zerg right now. I like this counter attack. Killing this probe. Maybe the cannon. Mm, so it might keep... Sugo around this nexus for a little bit longer. Um, and I don't think Sugo was cutting props. Oh, but there will be lurkers, but there is Observer already, so... Nope. No sir, Mr. Sugo is saying. More Hydras are incoming from October, but the army from Sugo is so powerful right now. I mean, it's only two high templars, but there are four storms available. Hello, Grandpa. Yeah, congratulations to us all. We all did it. We all survived. 25 years old, StarCraft was released. And here we go. 25 years older, we are getting hyped about someone having the best storm of his life. This is the best thing that can happen to October is like this counter attack. I think he could not, not not ask for anything better because he will have a great trade over here. He will trade against a lot of goons, but still the amount of units from Sugo is just too big. He, he simply out macro him. It's good for October that he denied this forge, but I wonder how he will defend this incoming counter attack from Sugo because. I know that this is all gateway man, but gateway man is what's killing most of the races, like if you are good with it, so nicely done. And there are only two lurkers and one sunken. Obviously it's possible that you are throwing your observer into the spore or like October that will snipe the observer and then it's almost impossible to continue attack. 
after that. Those zealots are taking heavy hits from those lookers, but there are so many of them that Sugo simply don't care. It's he's like, I can lose it. I can lose 10 zealots. I have 50 more in my back pocket. The observer will will make it. So <laughs> Sugo is just tuning on Zerg mode. Nice storms killing all those lookers. GG from October 2nd. We are having tight score 1 to 1. Ooh, my beautiful wifey. Karocze, czy ja nie mówię za głośno? Nie, nie, oliwka się tam nie ten? Nie.